Welcome to the second part of our big tutorial series. Facial expressions with test-driven development. Before we are able to develop facial expressions with TDD, we need to do some preparation. So in the first part, we talked about stubbing and mocking, and how to install and use mock for C Sharp. Mock is very important for reducing the complexity of our tests. Sadly, mock isn't able to mock sealed classes and most of the time Unity objects, like game objects, are sealed. To solve this problem, we have to create a wrapper infrastructure. We talk about wrapping in the next 3 or 4 videos. So before we start the tutorial, I want to say thanks to our patrons who help us to make these tutorials and our game Cortex possible. A very special thanks goes to Eric, thank you so much for your support. And a special thanks goes to Simon Zineda, David Hensel, Melina Brunner, Robert Hattel, Erich Gangel, Reinhard Bauer and Maximilian Heinle. If you like our tutorials, then please support us on Patreon. Now let's jump into the video. The mocking problem. Okay, let's say we want to test this little activator class, which sets a given game object active on start. In our test, we want to check if the setActive method is actually called on start. So how do we do that? As you can see, the start method is private and you don't have direct access to it from outside the class itself. Keep in mind that in the normal case you shouldn't test private methods. But in the case of private Unity messages, in my opinion, you should write so-called Unity tests. Unity messages are called in a specific order over time. Awake is called when the script object is initialized. Start is called on the frame when the script is enabled just before any of the update methods are called the first time. And each other frame, Unity calls update. You can write play mode tests for testing behavior over time. When you search the internet about testing mono behaviors, it's often said that you shouldn't test mono behaviors at all and instead separate the logic from the mono behavior class into a normal class so that your mono behavior calls the other class. The other normal class can be unit tested. In my opinion, in many cases it is too complicated, especially for small mono behavior classes, to create a separate class which is then called by the mono behavior. Also, when you want to graphically configure the components within the Unity editor, you would have to pass the configuration to the other unit testable class. Of course, you should structure your code following the single responsibility principle, but separating each model behavior is overkill in my point of view. Before we are able to test model behaviors, we have to do some steps within Unity. Switch to Unity and open the test runner. Click on the play mode tab and on the button create play mode test assembly folder. As the name mentions, those tests will be play mode tests and mustn't be placed in an editor folder. Unity automatically creates an assembly definition file which guarantees that the play mode tests are excluded from your final game. Create an activated test script and switch to Visual Studio. Get rid of the mono behavior stuff, mark the class with the test fixture attribute and import the end unit framework. Create a method called start, game object is set, calls set active, returning an I enumerator and label it with the unity test attribute. Since our activator is a mono behavior, you can't create an activator instance with the new keyword. Instead, it must be attached to a game object. This needs to be done for every other mono behavior test. That's why I like to create a base test script. In Unity, create a new script and call it mono behavior base test. The class should be abstract and define a subject game object. Before each test, we assign the subject with a new game object. After each test, we want to destroy the subject and each other game object which may have been created during the test. We use link to achieve that in a single line of code. We also mark the setup and teardown methods as virtual so that we can add logic in one of our subtest classes which we'll inherit from this base class. So back in our activated tests class we inherit from mono behavior base test. 
In our test method, we add a new activator to the subject game object. Sadly, Visual Studio can't find the class. This is because the activator class needs to be in a separate assembly. In order to achieve that, switch to Unity and enter your scripts folder and add a new assembly definition file called scripts assembly for example. Now select the play mode test assembly and reference the scripts assembly. In our test, the activator is now available. We want to use mock for mocking the game object which should be activated by our activator so that we can verify if the set active method is called on start. The mock is passed to the activator. Now we need to wait one frame to call awake and another frame to call start. Lastly, we need to verify if the set active method is actually called. Our test is completed. Let's run it. You're getting an error because mock for C sharp can't mock sealed classes, and sadly, that's the case for Unity game objects. Okay, so how can we fix that? Wrapping preparation. The way I solved this issue was to wrap the full Unity hierarchy into my own corresponding classes each realizing an interface of the same name. This sounds a bit complicated, right? But it's actually a simple and straightforward concept. When we inspect the game object API by right clicking onto the game object within Visual Studio and selecting examine definition, we can see that the game object inherits from object. We do the same for the object class and notice that it's the very base class and doesn't inherit any other classes. So the hierarchy we want to map is game object inherits from object. Therefore, we create an i object and an i game object interface where the i game object interface inherits the i object interface so that the hierarchy is fully described. Since our activator class calls the set active method of the game object, we define this method in the i game object interface as well. Now, in our activator, we can simply exchange the game object property with an iGame object property. Of course, you can't use the serialized field anymore. For now, just get rid of it. And in the next part of this video series, I'm showing you how to serialize your wrapper classes as if they were standard Unity objects. Of course, you get errors in your tests. So, mock from iGame object instead of Unity's game object, and that's it. The rest of the previous code is compatible with the new implementation. When we run the test now, you can see that this time it passes. We just turned our existing untestable class into a fully testable one. I'm sure that you already have an idea about how the journey continues, but may question if that extra work is necessary. It's a big benefit to make your classes testable, but that's not the only advantage. In the next video, I'll try to show you the other useful implications that follow with using Unity wrappers. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Please don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to our newsletter, support us on Patreon and subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day. It's your sensei.